As a child, my parents always told me, you could be whatever you want to be. You could do whatever you want to do. And it was something I heard my parents saying it, but I didn't totally believe it. Yet I went out in the world and I carried myself and I held my head high and I stood there and I looked people in their eyes and I talked to people as if I was deservant of everything that this planet has to offer. He who says he can and he who says he can't are both usually right. Well, you shouldn't be afraid of taking risks and pursuing something meaningful. But you should be more afraid of staying where you are if it's making you miserable. You're paying a price by sitting there being miserable. You might say, well, the devil I know is better than the one I don't. It's like, don't be so sure of that. The clock is ticking. Yeah. And if you're miserable in your job now and you change nothing, in five years you'll be much more miserable and you'll be a lot older. Most things that never get done, never get done because they never get started. You procrastinate. Procrastination is a killer. It kills plans and it kills projects and it kills dreams. See, here's what I'm looking at. What are the uses for your life right now that you haven't even reached for yet? See, I believe that when you don't have enough encouragement to act on your dreams or ideas or you're not enlightened enough, then life will act on you. You've got to continue to work on yourself personally, to work on yourself professionally, to continue to achieve technical mastery of the information that's out here. You've got to set high standards that will begin to set the pace. You've got to decide to be relentless. You've got to decide never to give up. You've got to find some reasons within yourself that will give you the stamina when life catches you on the blind side to get back up again, to keep on calling and coming back again and again and again. Every opportunity is the last opportunity. Every opportunity I have to reprove myself again because the day you become content, the day you stop evaluating yourself, the day you stop growing, the day you stop getting better is the day you die, is the day the person who's trying to catch you will get you. I'll get around to being happy. I'll get around to making my masterpiece of my life. I'll get around to my dreams. I'm gonna get around to fixing this relationship that's broken. I'm gonna get around to feeling those emotions. And then it's another day and another day and they keep it in the distance until there are no more days. And I don't care if you're 18 years old listening to this, 28 or 48, we don't know if we have one more day or a hundred more days or a thousand more days. But we know this, there'll eventually be a time where we don't have any more days. Practice only makes improvement. Perfection doesn't exist. They need to take it out of the dictionary. It doesn't, it doesn't exist. Practice only makes improvement. You can always better your best. You have not done your best work yet. All right, I'm one day better than I was yesterday. And that's how we have to look at life. That's how we have to look at these situations. And eventually you'll stop feeling the way that you feel right now. And, and, and because of the actions that you're taking, by the time that you stop feeling, because here's the thing, if you did nothing, if you just continue to like live and you did nothing, all right, you will eventually get over this because time cures the painful wounds. Uh, you're a success every day. Success is a daily thing, not a destination thing. Because so many times people have a, have a tendency to devalue the moment today. What they do is they greatly value the destination. And so they kind of talk about, well, when I get there, or if I arrive there, or when I do that, or when I accomplish this. And they don't understand that success is a daily thing. And I'm here to share with you that the secret of success is determined by your daily agenda. Life can be overwhelming. That's the way life works. It is testing you. It is going to throw problems at you and it is going to throw them at you all at the same time. This is the way life works, Murphy's Law. It is easy to feel beaten when you're faced with all those problems at once. But let me tell you, that does not mean give up fighting. In fact, it means the opposite. It is time for you to fight harder, to dig in, to go on the war path, to assess what the problems are and decide which one you are going to attack first. Because along the process, what's more important, what you acquire or who you become? 
And a lot of people think what they acquire is the thing that makes them who they are. No, it's who you become in the process of chasing what you want to acquire, right? Change expectation for appreciation. Extract the lessons and the blessings from the situations that didn't turn out the way you want them to turn out. But most importantly, man, approach it and eliminate the outcome. Here's what you should know about winning before you chase it. Winning's not loyal to you. It doesn't care about you. Winning doesn't care how sore you are. Winning doesn't care how much sleep you get. Winning doesn't care how hard you work at times. Winning requires all of you and then more, and it promises you nothing. It's a mastermind of creating fear and doubt in your mind. It causes setback after setback. So the question is about winning. Are you willing to sprint when the distance is unknown? If you can get a mental image of the person you would most like to become, Begin now to act as that person would act in everything you do. Gradually, imperceptibly, you will actually become that person. Before you can do something, you must first be something. Before you can do what you would most like to do, you must first become the person who can do it. Everything that hurts you, find a way to overcome it. Everything that you feel is difficult for you, Find a way to still do it. The future belongs to the risk takers, not the security seekers. Life is perverse in the sense that the more you seek security, the less of it you have. But the more you seek opportunity, the more likely it is that you will achieve the security that you desire. Whenever you feel fear or anxiety and you need to bolster your courage to persist in the face of obstacles and setbacks, Switch your attention to your goals. Create a clear mental picture of the person that you would like to be performing the way you would like to perform. There is nothing wrong with thoughts of fear as long as you temper them with thoughts of courage and self-reliance. Whatever you dwell upon grows, so be careful. This brings us to a very important mental principle called the law of accumulation. The application of this law is a fundamental reason for success in every field, including yours. This law says that every great life or great career is an accumulation of hundreds and perhaps thousands of efforts that nobody ever sees or appreciates. Great success is the result of countless hours, maybe even months and years of preparation and hard work toward the goal of becoming very good at what you are doing. This law of accumulation says that life is very much like a balance sheet with both credits and debits. Every time you do something positive to enhance your abilities and to improve your life, you get a credit on the credit side of your ledger. Each time you waste your time or neglect to take advantage of an opportunity to learn and grow, you get a debit on the debit side of your ledger. Here's the key. Everything counts. Everything that you do or fail to do is written down and totaled up on your balance sheet. Everything that you do or fail to do counts in some way. Nothing is neutral. Everything is either moving you toward a better life or moving you away from it. Everything counts. A successful, happy, self-confident person is an individual who has consciously and deliberately built up a lot of credits on his or her balance sheet. An unhappy, negative, or insecure person is a person who has a lot of debits on his or her balance sheet. Because the only things that count are your actions, it seems that every positive and constructive action you engage in adds up and increases your levels of self-confidence and self-esteem. The law of incremental improvement, perhaps the most important corollary of the law of accumulation, is what is called the law of incremental improvement. This is really the law that explains how you move from wherever you are to the top of your field. This is the law that explains all great success in America or anywhere else in the world. This law simply states that a person becomes good at his or her chosen field by improving incrementally, continuously, over a long period of time. The development of the unshakable self-development will open up such possibilities for you as you cannot now imagine. You will be able to dream bigger dreams, set bigger goals, make greater commitments, and plunge into life more wholeheartedly than you ever have before.
Self-confidence is the hinge on which the gate of individual achievement turns. When your self-confidence becomes unlimited, you will be able to realize more of your potential than you could under any other circumstances. More than 2,000 years ago, Aristotle wrote that happiness is a condition. It is not something that is achieved by pursuing it directly, but rather comes as a result of our engaging in purposeful activities. We develop the confidence to tackle larger goals by applying our energies to the accomplishment of smaller goals. We build up our confidence as we move forward until we reach the point at which there is nothing that we won't take on. In fact, the habit of setting and achieving ever larger goals is absolutely indispensable to the development of ever higher levels of self-confidence and personal power. You can only really believe in yourself when you absolutely know that you have the ability to do what you set out to do. True self-confidence does not come from positive wishing or positive hoping or positive thinking. It comes from positive knowing based on having proven to yourself over and over again that you have what it takes to get from wherever you are to wherever you want to go. Self-confidence is a state of mind. It is an attitude and as an attitude, it is more important than facts. However, it must be based on facts to be the kind of self-confidence you can rely on in a crunch. Your job is to do whatever it takes to convince yourself in your heart that you are absolutely unstoppable and that you can achieve anything that you put your mind to. If self-confidence is an attitude of mind, it is based on mental principles and mental laws foremost of which is thought is creative. You are not what you think you are, but what you think you are as you systematically and deliberately change your thinking about yourself. Your outer reality changes to conform with it. Your thoughts create your life, including and especially your thoughts with regard to your feelings of self-confidence. The reason that goals are so important is because of these mental laws, the consequences of which are inevitable and inescapable. You are happy and successful to the degree to which you conform your life and your thinking to these laws and live in harmony with them. The first law, which we have already discussed, is the law of cause and effect. This law is so simple and powerful that you need to remind yourself of it all the time. Everything that happens in your life, success or failure, wealth or poverty, health or illness, happiness or unhappiness, self-confidence or insecurity are all subject to this law. The Bible teaches this basic law as the principle of sowing and reaping. It says that whatsoever a man soweth, that also shall he reap. This especially refers to the thoughts you think, if you sow positive, optimistic, uplifting thoughts in your mind, you will reap positive, optimistic, uplifting events and experiences in your life. It cannot be otherwise. If you sow clear goals and objectives in your mind, you will reap clear results and rewards in your outer life. Every time you reach the next level, you grow. And every time you grow, your potential changes. After you conquer that challenge, you discover that what you are now capable of has changed. You have more strength to conquer higher mountains. If you are gonna reach your true potential, you have much bigger challenges to face. There's an unlimited amount of mountains to climb because your growth is unlimited. And because your growth is unlimited, that means your potential is also unlimited. It's never ending, a never ending journey of growth and expansion. Your growth is unlimited in every area. What can I do now to make those changes so I can reach the next level in my health because the new energy I will get from better health is going to help me get to the next level in other areas as well. What can I learn or commit to now to make that area of my life better? Can my mental health and self-image be better? 
What can I work on every day to make sure my inner talk and sense of self is better? Because the better I feel about me, the better I am going to show up in this world. When I get to the end of my life, I want to know for sure I left nothing on the table. I want to know I gave my heart and soul to reach my truest potential. I want to know I did all I could to carve out the greatest version of me. No regrets. That's what it's about. Having zero regrets. And you can only have no regrets if you gave every ounce of your soul while you were alive on this planet. Every area can be mastered. So I am going to master every area. What's the point in having one piece of the pie? I'm cooking the whole thing, so I'm going to enjoy the whole thing, piece by piece, until my soul is full. And it will never be full until the end of my life. When I look in the mirror and can say, honestly, I gave everything to be my very best, and I'm proud of who I have become, until that day I will not stop. I want to know what my life would be like if I just gave everything I have for my goals and dreams. Not just one day, every day. What if I got better every day? Not just one day, a new piece of knowledge I could use to benefit my future. How great could I become? Ask yourself that question. How great could I become? What areas of my life could be the very best they have ever been? What could I commit to right now to make absolutely sure I am pushing for my highest potential. I want you to make that commitment today. Do whatever you must do to ensure you get to the end with no regrets.